Hey, thanks for joining us at FrontRowPreps.com, powered by Chicken Ranch Casino. I'm Joe Cortez, joined by James Burns. We bring you now the our first ever edition of the Small School Rankings, presented by Valley Orthopedic, the Bone and Joint Specialists. Burnsy, we started compiling these rankings way back, uh, right at the beginning of summer in June, yep, yep. and we put out our way too early rankings. There's been quite a shakeup since then, hasn't there? Yeah, you know, when we started putting these together, we were basically just going off talent we thought would come back. Right. Uh, since then, there's obviously been some some new additions to, to rosters. There's been some coaching changes. There's there's just been some development and growth. And, you know, we've had the opportunity to spend some time with some of these teams you know, over the summer in camps and at practices and watching them. And uh, we've we've kind of reshaped our top ten for, we absolutely for the start have. of the season. So let's dive right in. Number ten, Big Valley Christian, the small private school in Modesto. Yeah, you know, this is one of those teams that I've been high on for a very long time. They return uh, junior running back Javen Drobnik. He's, uh, you know, before his injury last season, he was injured in five games. Yeah. Before those injuries started to crop up, he was on pace for over 2,000 yards. Absolutely. Would have probably led the area in rushing last season. He's back. He looks healthy. He looks like a load. He looks like a load. I mean, he's quick. He's got, a big, like a, load. He's got a big <laughs> lower base. Hey, man, we're tough to tackle. Right? Tough to tackle. <laughs> If you're tough to tackle, you got a place on a team, and he truly does have a place in Brian Burkfeld's offense. Uh, he's going to have a big year. Gunnar Selivar, the quarterback, it, it, it helps to have a second-year starter back. Um, oh, they, they will be a force in the CCAA for sure. Uh, they're our number 10 team. Okay, number nine. This is where the shakeups kind of yeah. start to take shape. Number nine, we've got Denaire. The more we uh, did our homework and we got around talking with coaches and putting eyes on teams, it became clear that Denaire had a, has a pretty special team this year, and it could be one of the best that Anthony Armas has had there in his short time. Uh, eight returning starters on defense, eight returning starters on uh, on offense, and we know that recipe, right? We've been we're here at the Corral, and Oakdale used that that same recipe uh, to get to a, a D3 section final and. Not saying that Denaire will get to a section final, but they should be competitive um, in the Southern League. In the Southern League. Yeah. Uh, number eight, Calaveras. Always a tough out in the Mother Load League. You know, this Always. was going to be the first year in a long time that they haven't had a bird under center. Um, right. But you know what? Jason Weatherby does a fantastic job with that group. The fact that they play up in their preseason, they're going to play Escalon. Mm -hmm. They're going to see some of these teams. They're not going to shy away from anybody. And I think that gives that goes a long way in my book. They're going to be our number eight team to start the season. Number seven, Trey Ozenball and the Rippin' Christian. Talk with Trey, and he really likes this group. He feels like he's got kids that can really go and start on any team in the area. And uh, with that kind of talent on the field, um, and the motivation they have. I mean, they had some really ugly losses last year, yeah. especially one to Oristemba. They're going to use that as motivation, and they're going to be a tough out in the Southern League. They could find themselves in contention as well. Uh, and don't forget, they, they reached a section final last year, too. That's right. So uh, that's number seven, and they may be climbing. They may be climbing. Number six, Modesto Christian. They've got one of the top recruits in the area in Xavier Carlton, a kid that has received uh, an offer from Notre Dame, among others. He's a DN. He's probably going to be Notre Dame. Notre Dame. He's going to. He's going to be. He's going to. Some things don't change. Uh, he's going to be one of the, the the tougher defensive linemen in the area. Uh, he could be a player that could be in the mix for Defensive Player of the Year honors. Um, just got he's got an NFL body. I just wonder about the numbers with that group. This is one of those teams that we had rated er, uh, pretty high early on because they were section finalists. But the fact that they have 18 players, you know, it, it's a little scary, and I'm sure it gives Mike Parsons some some pause too. Yeah, it's tough to it's tough to even practice with 18 players. You yes. got to do a lot of half line looks and yeah. get garbage cans out and, exactly. and uh, improvise. Hey, uh, number five, we've got Rippin. Yeah, Rippin's another team that we had rated pretty high. In fact, they were number two in our way too early mm -hmm. small school rankings. Um, they have a fantastic quarterback in Ryan Daggett. He's one of the top 50 returning players in our area. He's actually a top 20 returning player in our area. The kid is a freakish athlete. Uh, he went to the Masters meet in track. He ran hurdles. Uh, he's got a great arm. Um, and he's a second year starter. We talked about the importance of having a guy like him under center. Um, do they have the horses around him, the playmakers around him to, to really be consistent in the TVL. That remains to be seen. Uh, I know that, uh, that Chris Musman likes his squad. We like him too. That's why we have him number five. Number four, Aaron Souza, one of our favorite guys. Yeah. A guy who'd like to get into this business, actually. He's always saying he wants one of our jobs. He may join us. He may. He yeah. may. we got to get him on the, on camera. Or Stimba High School. Uh, the prohibitive favorite to win again. They return Jacob Betancourt, mm -hmm. who's, who's who's staring down every passing record in, in program history. They've got Tyler Vargas, who's a top 10 returning talent for our area, wide receiver that just has uh, an unbelievable knack to find the end zone. Number three, 
No Mark Larrero, but we've still got Escalon way high in this poll. You know what? They, they couldn't have picked a better person to hand the baton to, I think. Than giving, Andrew Beam. Giving it to Andrew Beam, a for, former quarterback for Mark Larrero. Uh, he is an Escalon guy through and through. He's run the lower levels for him. He's run the weight room for him over the past few years. Just a, just a, f a fantastic hire by the administration there. And I like that Andrew is going to bring a little bit of uh, – a, a, a innovation a different flavor some innovation to that to that offense but listen he's got he's got some of the pieces in place to, to be super competitive this year and, and possibly go after another tbl title maybe even a section final but number two the cinderella team from last year they got into the playoffs on a shoestring yeah finished five and five in the regular season and took it all the way to the section title the hillmar yellow jackets yeah what a roller coaster ride for them last year they were up and down up and down and i'm not even sure frank frank marks had knew what what he had until, no. until the calendar turned. And, and how many times did we pick against them in the playoffs? Yeah. Like every, every week. week every yeah. week. They might have the most dynamic backfield outside of uh, maybe Central Catholic with, with Renfro and Sharp back. Sharp was the Merced Sun star player of the year and really a catalyst in their run last right. year. Um, they have a quarterback that looks like he may be coming back who got some uh, some reps last year. And then they got a kid on the other side of the ball, Silvera, who had over 100 tackles. I mean, you have key principal players in – in these in these in positions key spots. in key spots and uh that bodes well for going into that section final against modesto christian frank told me as I, as I was leaving the field that night he says hey joe don't pick us again this week he liked it yeah, yeah. <laughs> good guy frank marcus yep. one of the best in our region yep. well we don't like hillmar enough to put him number one that spot is usually reserved for the sonora wildcats We've got evan bearden who might be one of the best players in the area regardless of position uh, he's a kid that's getting looked at by many four-year schools you've got jake gookin mm -hmm. who is another second year quarterback uh, an all-league quarterback, and the kid had like 900 yards in two playoff games and 11 touchdowns. Those are just goofy, goofy numbers. Uh, and then you have a running back in C.J. Castleman. Uh, they are going to be explosive. They're going to be tough to beat. At a small school level, they are clearly the number and one. They'll be tested right out of the gate against Oakdale High, yep. number four in the large school rankings, yep. which is why we're here yep. at Oakdale High School, the Corral, because our game of the week, Oakdale-Sonora, one of the longest rivalries, in this area. Yeah. yeah, stay tuned for our prediction show. We'll tell you all about that matchup in another video. In another video. So thanks for dropping by and be sure to check out our large and small school rankings presented by Valley Orthopedic, the bone and joint specialists. We'll see you next time.